Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics. First, the highlights. Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors declare indefinite nationwide strike over unmet demand. Senate asks Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission and DISCOS to hold plan tariff increase. Plus, federal government detects over 1,600 fake employment letters. Oh, and welcome to the program. I'm Melissa Walker in Lagos. We begin with the difficulty already being experienced by Nigerians over the removal of fuel subsidy, which may now be worsened following the announcement of an immediate, total and indefinite strike by the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, NARD. The association premised its action on the failure of the federal government to attend to sundry welfare issues after the expiration of a two-week ultimatum that expired on July the 19th. In a communique by its National Executive Committee, the resident doctors demand the immediate release of the circular on one-for-one one replacement of exited clinical staff in various hospitals, payment of the 2023 Medical Residency Training Fund. Others are the payment of all salary arrears, including the 2014, 2015 and 2016 arrears, hazard allowance arrears, as well as arrears of the consequential adjustment of the minimum wage. The implementation of the full consolidated medical salary structure, CONMES, and also the immediate reversal of the down grading of the membership certificate by the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, among other demands. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors in Yobe State, they joined their counterparts in other states in what they call the total indefinite strike action, demanding a point agenda. The Secretary General of NARD in the state, Dr. Umar Aliu, in an exclusive interview with Channels Television, says already they have submitted notification letters to the office of the head of service, as well as directed all its members to stay away from health facilities. A visit by a correspondent to specialist hospital in Damaturu, the state capital, shows patients seen stranded with only nurses attending to them, although a few doctors who got the notification late were also seen attending to patients. The notice for the strike, remember that this is not the first time. I think if you could recall, like on 17th of May, uh, similar issues of strike arose when we, Yobe State in particular, uh, decided to shun the strike looking at its own peculiarities and then the level of commitments of government in, into healthcare delivery services as well as you know uh, the need of our people so we had to look at that and then shun the strike so we had to we intimated the relevant stakeholders at that then and we had a very fruitful discussions with various agreements which we hope before, by then it should have been fulfilled by now. Well, they should understand that um, strike is not something we call for or wish for. And always it has been our tradition to intimate the government to the fullest uh, to ensure that a consensus agreement has been reached and then issues are resolved. The fact that we are taking these measures uh, is not based on our own interest, but it's call for action and necessity. And that means we are urging all our members to please cooperate with us and they should understand that we are not fighting this or we are not doing this for our own personal interest. We are doing this for the best interest of every doctor in your best state. Well, yesterday was a day of drama right here in Lagos, where the suspended governor of the central bank was arraigned. He was rearrested by the Department of State Services, DSS, contrary to an order of court granting him bail in the sum of 20 million naira with one surety in like sum, and that he should be moved from DSS custody and remanded at the correctional centre. The DSS had produced Mr. Mifele at the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos for his arraignment by the federal government on a two-count charge of illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition. Our judiciary correspondent, uh, Shola Shueli, has more. 
It's the first time the suspended CBN governor will be seen in public after his arrest on June 10. He was brought to the Federal High Court Lagos by the Department of State Services, DSS, at about 9.20 a.m. for his arraignment on a two-count charge of illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition and promptly led into the courtroom of Justice Nicholas Owebo. The two-count charge was read to him and he pleaded not guilty. Then followed arguments by his lead counsel, senior advocate of Nigeria, Joseph Daudu, and the prosecution counsel, Nkiru jones Nabo, a deputy director of prosecution of the Federation, on the vexed issue of whether Mr. Emefele's bail application could be argued. The prosecution insisted that he had not been served with a copy of the bail application, but was swiftly confronted with a proof of service endorsed by the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation. In his ruling, Justice Owebo held that there was indeed evidence of service. He rejected the objections of the federal government and proceeded to hear the bail application. In his submissions, Joseph Dowdo asked the court to admit his client to bail on self-recognizance or on other liberal terms pending the hearing and determination of the trial. But the prosecution counsel opposed the request for bail. In an oral submission, the prosecutor argued that the suspended governor of the CBN is a powerful man who could intimidate witnesses. She asked the court to note that he had refused to hand in his passport, an indication of his capacity to abscond and evade his trial. After listening to both parties, Justice Owebo declined to grant bail on self-recognizance. Instead, he granted bail in the sum of 20 million naira with one shorty in like sum. The show team must own a landed property in Lagos and swear to an affidavit of means. The defendant is also to deposit his international passport with the court registrar. Pending the fulfillment of all these conditions, the judge remanded the suspended CBN governor in the custody of the Ikori Correctional Center as against the request of the FG's counsel that he be remanded in the custody of the DSS. Shortly after the court's ruling, lawyers to the federal government took their leave declining to comment on the day's proceedings. Operatives of the DSS strategically took positions preparatory to re-arresting Mr. Emefele. His lawyers quickly raised an alarm. We saw an avowed intention on their part to actually take him back into their custody, despite the order of court. We then called the attention of the learned trial judge, who was magnanimous to hear us. And we told him that these were our fears, so he sent for the officer in charge of the squadron that uh, you see milling around here, armed to the teeth. And his answer was that he's under instruction to secure his safety, and therefore he's under instruction from his boss, meaning the director general, that he should uh, bring him back. We said no. The judge then told him, I am now in charge. The court is in charge. He has been brought to court and we have made orders. And he has been asked to go there. Apparently seemed adamant. And uh, he turned and left. Attempts by the officials of the correctional center to take custody of the suspended CBM governor was met with resistance by the DSS. And this led to a clash. interventions from lawyers and other quarters, the officers of the correctional center withdrew and took their leave, paving the way for the DSS to again take custody of Mr. Emefele. Are constrained because we do not want where there will be exchange of arms by the two organs of government. Uh, we may very, very reluctantly allow our client force the DSS to willfully, consciously, intentionally flout the orders of the court by taking him into their custody. At about 3 p.m., the drama came to an end, with the DSS leading the suspended CBN governor away. Trial in this court has been fixed for November the 14th. Shola Shueli, Channels Television.
Meanwhile, the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, has described as despicable yesterday's scuffle between operatives of the Department of State Services, DSS, and the officers of the Nigerian Correctional Service, NCOS, over the custody of the suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Amirfile. In a statement released, the NBA president, Yakubu Mekiao, said the altercation between officers of the two government agencies on the premises of the Federal High Court of Lagos is a recipe for anarchy and chaos adding it was a brazen disrespect for the sanctity of the court premises. Quote, while it is difficult not to hold the leadership of the two federal government agencies directly responsible for the shameful and disgraceful conduct of its personnel, one cannot discount the possible overzealousness or excesses of the officers involved as being responsible for what was witnessed. This incident, regrettably, is further evidence of the lack of discipline and absence of professionalism that continues to plague key security institutions in Nigeria, which without doubt is largely responsible for the limited progress in achieving a coordinated response to security concerns across the country. The NBA further called on the two agencies to take immediate disciplinary measures against the officers involved in the disgraceful conduct. In addition, that there is the urgent need for a complete overhaul of the institutions and a total reorientation of the personnel. Well, for more on that situation, a former Attorney General of Kaduna State joins me now for more. Jonathan Adamo, welcome to the program, Honourable. Pleasure to be here. What do you make of the actions of both security agencies at the Federal High Court yesterday? Absolutely disgraceful. Completely disgraceful. Um, in an atmosphere where we have interagency cooperation, that kind of thing should not happen. The scenario we saw yesterday would have been re resolved by a simple phone call. The DSS uh, head director would simply place a phone call to the, direct, the person in charge of the correctional service, you know, and then they resolve it within themselves. And DSS could have taken the former CBN governor, the suspended CBN governor, into their custody without any drama if they had a legal basis to take him into their custody. But to see two sister security agencies that should be serving the same cause, openly fighting themselves, tearing the clothes of one party in the full glare of cameras, is completely disgraceful. And one wonders, was there some sort of extra intelligence that the DSS had that it insisted on taking him um, as against the, that of the correctional service? One really wonders. But is this something that you've encountered uh, during your time as uh, honorable uh, judge? I mean, was there an order given by your court and it wasn't followed explicitly by security agencies? Well, um... Just a little correction, I was not a judge, I was attorney general. Uh, but while I served, I recall that I served in the Security Council, and we had the correctional service represented, we had the DSS represented, we had the police represented. And so uh, if there was an issue that these different agencies needed to do, if there's good working relationship that ought to be there, they would simply, you know, talk to themselves. Um, I mean, there are certain things that the DSS needed to do, and they got the police to assist them to do it. And so all they needed to do was just to talk with each other. That kind of scenario, would never, we never face that kind of scenario, because the, the, all the agencies work together. The, Oh dear, I think um, you know that video is frozen. We've been speaking to uh, the former Attorney General of Kaduna State on the happenings of yesterday, um, uh, with the DSS rearresting um, the suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. I understand the Attorney General, uh, former Attorney General, is back with us. Okay, so like I was saying, that situation would never have arisen during my time in office. Um, the agencies would simply have talked talk with one another, you know, and decided on who should have custody of um, Mr. Mifili. 
So it also means that prior to this, their roles were not clear. I mean, the roles and responsibilities of each of these agency involved in, in the rivalry. Do you think there are any legal implications of, of this? And this is in the overall judicial process, processes. First of all, there is no confusion in rules. The court made a clear order that Mr. Mefele should be reminded in the custody of the correctional service. That we know. Now, if the DSS had a, another court order or a basis to arrest or rearrest Mr. Emifele, again, like I said earlier, they should simply have discussed with each other and resolved that without anyone knowing about that. The, the funny thing is that we, we this should not even happen. The DSS had been after Mr. Emifele right from the time of the Buhari administration. So they've had enough time to investigate him, to compile all charges against him, all offenses that Oh dear, we're having a hard time um, with that, but um, still talking about this, and this is hoping that um, you can hear me, um, Mr. Adamu. I just want to quickly ask, this is can the court intervene uh, to resolve this matter? Does this behavior or action um, impact the efficiency, you know, and effectiveness of the criminal justice system? What measures do you think we can take uh, to sort of make sure that this doesn't happen again? Um, because, I mean, Nigerians are watching. The court has been rendered helpless. What the DSS is promoting is anarchy, which shouldn't be. It's in the hands of the president right now to call the two agencies to order the DSS reports to the presidency. So the president should simply step in and resolve it. But as, as, as it is right now, the, the courts are helpless. I mean, the, the, they could institute contempt proceedings against the DSS, uh, but the court doesn't have any power to arrest. It doesn't have the power to send anyone to prison to enforce its orders. The orders are enforced by the executive arm of government. So at the end of the day, by and large, it's the president that has the call to make, and he has to make that call right away. Former Attorney General of Kaduna State, Jonathan Adamo, many thanks uh, for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Always my pleasure to be with you. We have more when we return. Do stay with us. Welcome back. The federal government says it has detected 1,618 federal civil servants with fake letters of employment. A statement signed by the head of service of the Federation, Mrs. Falasha de Yemiesol, notes that the discovery was made in the ongoing efforts of government to clean up its payroll. According to the statement, the detection was made by the Integrated Personnel and Payroll Information System, IPIS, following the verification of 69,854 officers across the core ministries, departments and agencies of government across 36 states and the federal capital territory. The head of service also notes that the affected workers have been suspended from the payroll and have been handed over to the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission for proper investigation and prosecution. The statement notes that the service will ensure 100% public service human resources management to minimise wastages and enhance efficiency. Over in Delta State, the governor, Sharif Boriwari, has announced the approval of the payment of 5 billion naira promotion arrears to civil servants in the state to be paid in three tranches from August to October 2023. It disclosed this while addressing workers during an unscheduled visit to the Professor Chike Edozier Secretariat in Asaba, the state capital. According to the governor, the approval is in fulfillment of a promise made during the March 18th governorship election campaign. And now we're in Cross River State, where the governor has expressed his excitement over the ongoing work at the Obudu International Cargo Airport, pledging that the government will provide 
all the needed support to ensure its speedy completion. The governor was speaking shortly after taking a tour across the project site in the local government area, where he explained that the project is very important to the state as it will boast the economic strength of the state and beyond. The managing director of SIBA, uh, contractors of the Ubudu Cargo Airport, is also optimistic of the airport's completion with adequate support from the state government. Well, so far, I'm um, very impressed with uh, what has been done here. I think a lot has been done here, and um, uh, the airport actually is ready to go. Uh, as we see, it's just the tarmac, which, of course, that's the main thing for the airport. That is, uh, all other things are on ground. So uh, even from the contractors, have, uh, uh, they've said probably if things go well by December, uh, we should begin to see some activity here. Uh, you know, uh, moving uh, the next government, this is very important because we want the whole of this uh, area to begin to generate wealth for Cross River State. We've had the ranch, it's been there for decades, and this is the time to make that ranch work. And this is one of the main uh, facility that is going to make that ranch attractive. So we want to see how both are carried along immediately, immediately. But I've check and assess uh, the work done so far. Uh, it's impressive. And they say they've been working with uh, regulatory officials from the federal aviation uh, agencies. And uh, not too long, I think, we also will be seeing meeting with them. And then we'll know the way forward. And we're in Bayosa, where elders and leaders of the All Progressives Congress in Bayosa West Senatorial District, they've applauded the interim administrator of the presidential amnesty program, Major General Barry Ndoimu, retired for what they describe as his sound reform measures that have repositioned the program that was gradually cascading into a moribund state. Elders made this known at the Nigeria Union of Journalists Press Center in Yenagua while reacting to an alleged call for the removal of uh, um, for the removal of PAP uh, by an unknown group in the state, the addressing journalists and other concerned citizens of the district, the chairman of the forum maintained that they are proud of uh, the achievements of the presidential amnesty boss. Wish to state unequivocally and unambiguously that there was no time APC leaders forum in Bayesa State took a decision to call for the sack of the interim administrator of the presidential amnesty program, as they always form an integral part of the various fora that make up the party in the state. Members of the members of APC from Bayesa West Senatorial District maintain that the present PAP Helsman has created far reaching impact in the program and has contributed significantly to the improvement of the party in the state with sound reform measures so far taken to reposition the program that was gradually cascading in, moribund, in a moribund state. The Bayesa APC elders maintain that they are proud of the, of the achievement of the, of Indiomu only 10 months in office and will continue to support him to succeed further. The Senate is asking the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission and 11 electricity distribution companies, DISCO, to halt their proposed tariff increase. The upper chamber made the request on Tuesday after considering a motion by Senator Yanus Akintunde, who drew the attention of his colleagues to the proposed increase by the electricity tariff um, in the tariff by 11 successor electricity distribution companies. While presenting his motion, he says the increase will definitely impact the affordability of electricity for Nigerians, further exacerbating the financial burdens faced by households and also businesses. The Senate consequently 
urge DISCOs to henceforth allow Nigerian communities to recover uh, their costs of buying electricity transformers before asking them to pay bills and halt the estimated billing by supplying consumers with prepaid meters at affordable rates. And to more political stories, we're in Kaduna State, where Governor Obasani has signed the executive order on financial inclusion for one million uh, poor and vulnerable persons in the state. Governor Sani explains that the order is part of efforts to cushion the negative impact of the removal of fuel subsidy on the residents. He was speaking during the signing of the executive order in his office. And in an effort to avert manpower shortage following the mass retirement of civil servants employed uh, in former Borno State, the Yobe State Government has approved the training of 76 workers of different cadre at the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON. The head of civil service at the brief farewell ceremony asked participants to be good ambassadors of the state. Also, we're in Oshun State where Governor Adimola Adeleke appointed 14 more special advisors, cutting across various sectors to complete his governance structure. The governor further approved the appointment of the chairman, vice chairman for some non-statutory boards. The appointees were inaugurated an hour ago. And finally, before we go, outside our shores, there uh, appears to be reports that the president, uh, Mahmoud uh, Mohamed Bazoum of Niger, was prevented from leaving his palace by his own guards. Um, based on that report, um, it appears to be another attempted at coup in that region. However, sources close to the government say uh, the Nigerian army is still loyal to the government of Niger, and the issue might be with the presidential guards. We understand that uh, the Nigerian government is weighing in, and also France. We're bringing more details as we get them. Well, that's our show this afternoon. You've been served lodged. Many thanks for watching. I'm Melissa Walker. Bye for now.